What am I going to say? What? What can I say, really? <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Look. This is a Super Bowl hangover, okay? This is a Super Bowl hangover. Like I've been saying it from the jump. And everyone wants to talk about, oh, well, you know. Sorry, I take it down. Everyone's like, oh, sorry. You know, oh, well, this and that. We do this, do that, do that. It sounds good. In the rear view mirror, it does. But I'll tell you what. This is what it is. You know, you sit back and you're like, wow, you get a good win in London. Wins played really well. Now you add Golden Tate. You get a bye week to come in. You get the first Dallas who just got blown out by the Titans. This happens. See, now, at first, I wasn't blaming the defense. I said, hey, you know what? Our offense wasn't doing anything at all in the first half. The defense was out there a lot. And they only gave up six points. I was like, hey, you know what? Congrats to them. But then you see stupid plays. They made great plays. But they made bad plays. But I'll tell you what. It's plays like this that could have Jim Schwartz on the hot seat. Maybe have his ass fired, okay? I'm not calling for him to get fired, but I'm saying maybe you might want to look in that direction the way this thing was going, okay? Let me tell you right now. This guy, this is the play that stands out the most to me, okay? First of all, this is funny. The Eagles are better when it's third and four, third and three on defense, and they are when it's third and 15 or third and 20. Think about that, okay? Just think about it. Now, we're in the second half. I think there was 51 seconds left. Doug Pearson's calling timeouts, of course, because we're trying to get the ball back. We sacked Dak. We did a whole bunch of stuff. Like, there we go. Good. We sacked Dak. We did this. We did that. Good. We're getting the ball back. Cool. It's third and 15. We have 51 seconds left on the clock. Now, you're thinking, hey, you know what? This is what every other team does. It's third and 15. 51 seconds left on the clock. We're calling timeouts in the second half. I'm talking about the second, the second quarter, about to go into halftime. And you go, hey, you know what? You know, every other team does this all the time. They're third and 15, they're down. I mean, they're up or whatever. They just throw a screen pass, let the guy get tackled. The guy gets tackled. They, I mean, don't they try to get the first down, but they throw a screen, they throw a ball, you know, whatever, throw a short pass. Guy gets tackled, they punt the ball, and they know that the opposite team, like the Eagles, are not going to score within 30 seconds. Okay. That didn't happen there. 51 seconds left. They call a timeout. We call timeouts, of course. <laughs> Dallas throws, I guess, a screen or a short pass. I can't remember right now because I'm just all over the place so pissed off. I think his name's Gumpy. I can't remember his damn name. Whatever the hell his name is. Number 13 off Dallas. Really fast kid. Rookie. Wide receiver. I think he's pretty solid. He picks up a first down. On third and 15. In the second half, with 51 seconds left. Now think about that. 51 seconds left. Third down and 15. I've seen, I've watched football my entire life. And you notice it. You go, hey, you know what? Almost every team plays it safe. You know, it's third and 15. We got the ball on offense, but we're not going to go for first down. We're just going to dump it. Let the guy get hit. We're going to punt it. We're all good. And I guess I threw a short pass, and out of nowhere, it was a first down. And they scored on that drive, too. So once they ran that play, which was 51 seconds, probably the time they ran that, it was probably like 40 seconds left, they still went down and scored a touchdown. And that wasn't the first time tonight. That wasn't the first time this season. I remember 4th and 15 versus the Titans. Corey Graham was lined up at the sticks. The guy went behind him, behind the sticks. And what happened? The guy just threw right over his head. He didn't even know. See, with Jim Schwartz, it's ridiculous. And I watched a lot of, a lot of you know, a lot of this game tonight. I mean, all of it I watched. But throughout the game, the commentators were saying that Jim Schwartz does not like the blitz. Okay, cool. You don't like the blitz. That's fine. He thinks that the front four is that talented, which I think it is that talented. You got Michael Bennett, Fletcher Cox, this guy, that guy, Brandon Graham. You got people all over. And Dak had a lot of time to throw in certain situations. Now, you don't like the blitz, I get it. 
But the few times you did blitz tonight, it was on third and seven or third and five. The money down. Where if they get it, they convert and keep going. Why in the hell are you calling blitzes on that down? Call it on second and long. Call it on first and ten. Call it on second and seven. It don't even matter. Why on third and seven do you have nobody back there? You have the, the corners just manned up with these guys and you're just blitzing. Why call it then? Why? I don't like the blitz. Jim, I don't like the blitz. Swartz. Why are you calling it then? In the third and seven, a crucial situation to, to move the chains. Bring in the house. I mean, I mean, I see Malcolm Jenkins plus a corner coming at him. Guys are wide open. This is the down you can't give up. I'd rather go for a blitz on first and 10, first and 15, whatever it is, because, hey, you go first down, cool. There's another set of downs for them. But it's first down to get another set, cool, fine. But if it's third and something, this is a stop you need to make. I'm not trying to go in on Jim Schwartz all night long, okay? I'm not. It's not I, It's not all defense's fault because I'll tell you, but it is, though, at the same time. They had a pick six right there in their hands. Uh, our linebacker, Hill, I can't even pronounce his whole name. I don't give a shit about him. Whatever. Had a pick six right in his hands. He dropped the pick, and I understand. Listen, they always say defensive backs are, you know, Defensive players do not play wide receiver. That's the reason they play defense, because <laughs> they can't catch. But yeah, pick right in your hands, and you drop it. But it wasn't even you just dropped it. You could have ran that in for seven point, six points, then plus a field goal, make it seven. Like, that game changes. Atmosphere changes in the stadium. Everything goes sideways. You know what I'm saying? Everything is going the right way, starting to. So I can't really blame. So I go, I go, I go. Ah, you know what? He he does play defense, so I can't really blame him. You know. But then on that same drive, it's third and seven. Murray Cooper catches the pass, and Ronald Darby just try, tries to do his best Brian Dawkins impersonation that he can, but he can't really do it because he's not Brian Weapon X Dawkins. I'll tell you that. He sits back and just does this big boom, trying to bump into him, and Amari just bumps right off him. Mari bumps right off him and goes for the first down. It's like you had him this close, that close to where you could have, instead of bumping him, could have just wrapped him for a tackle, and you would have got the tackle. He would have got the tackle. He was this close. You want to bump and try to, like, oh, get a knockout blow on him. When you could have just literally, literally easily wrapped him up for a tackle, it would have been right there, fourth and three or whatever. They would have punted it because they were in the back of our end zone, and we got the ball back. That's on defense, and that defense has been horrible, okay? I know Darby's out now. Mills was out. I know corners were out. I get it, I get it, I get it. Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm just fired up tonight. I'm juice and charged. I'm pissed. You know, with the defense. and With the offense, they did start off slow. They did start off terrible. A lot of it, I will say, Doug Peterson did some shitty play calling. There were certain plays, like for example, it was fourth and one, okay? And I thought they were, they were going to go for uh, the QB sneak, uh, QB sneak, get the first down. Or maybe they were going to do some whatever. Everyone knew they were going to just run the ball. You could tell. As soon as they do, I'm like, why are you running the ball? And you just hand off to Josh Adams, and he gets stuffed. The whole defensive line knew it. I would have rather you put Josh Adams there and do a quick pitch. Or, you know what I'm saying? Or... A hard toss to your left or to your right, whatever you prefer. You know, just have Wentz under center, like said, Hut, pitch out this way. The whole line moves this way. Their D line still stuck in the middle, trying to catch up with our line. Bang. First down, maybe even more yardage. But you just go wrap the gut. Knowing our offensive line's banged up with no Lane Johnson. Big V's getting slaughtered. Slaughtered. The, by Demarcus Lawrence. First play of the game on offense. Demarcus Lawrence already in Wentz's face. Wentz did play bad. I will say that he did play. I'm going to say he played bad. He had, he had a, you know, interception right away. I was like, damn. And, of course, Leighton Vanderbridge, the guy I wanted the Eagles to draft, I thought was going to be a stud coming to the league. Of course, he went 19th overall. We picked 32, so I understand the circumstances. But coming into the draft, we thought he'd be a second-round talent. That's who I want the Eagles to take. 
and you see tonight, he he's a hell of a player. I'll give it to Dallas. He's a hell of a damn player. This guy, he basically single-handedly won the game on defense. When he stopped them right there on third and whatever to make us go make it fourth and seven, the guy was all over the field, okay? But back to Carson Wentz. He started kind of shaky like he did in the London game. I wouldn't say shaky. He completed some good passes, but he just made a bonehead interception. That's about it. A couple of throws he did make low. And then there was a couple of throws that he did make that were, like, too soft. You know, the one to Alshon was a little soft, and that's why I got broken up. If he would have threw a bullet, it would have been, boom, Alshon would have caught it and been gone. There would have been a big game. But then again, there was so much pressure on him with this line being just so dismantled. Jason Pierce is done. Randy Gregory's beating him. Randy Gregory? I remember Jason Peters used to stand up to some of the best of them. J.J. Watt, no matter who, and stand his ground. He's washed, man. He's done. But what I'm saying at the end of this, hold on, how long is this thing going? Hold on. All right, I'm going to get over this. As I'm saying at the end of this, Wins came back, started playing really solid. I'm like, okay, he's looking good. Two TDs, 300 yards. But there were certain throws he couldn't make because he couldn't step up. He couldn't do another step in order to get grip on some throws because the line was so banged up. And I also blamed up Pearson, like I said. Now, for, first off, he challenged a play, which was for one yard, which at the end of the day, I'm not going to blame him. You know why? Because that ended up helping us. That one yard actually helped because they ended up kicking a field goal instead of just running it in for a touchdown. So I'm not going to blame him. Now, if he lost the challenge, but yo, you're challenging for one yard. Your defense is that bad. You're so scared of losing a one-yard gain. But you know what? That worked out for that. So much just bullshit on offense with the play calling. And plus you keep running with Clement and Smallwood. Give Josh Adams the majority of the carries like I've been saying since the London game. What'd he do? You gave him, his, I think, his first or second carry or third carry, whatever it was. Boom, he breaks it for 29 yards. Then you give it to him again. Boom, he's ripping through guys. He's hitting holes through the mesh. Through the mesh of the defense and offense, he's banging through and making things happen. He should be the lead back. I don't understand how you may, he does a 29-yard run. Then you take him out and put small work men in, and they get nothing. Then when it's fourth and one, you say, hey, you know what, Adams? You had a great one, great run. It was 29 yards. Want to go back in on fourth and one in the crucial situation? Of course, the kid's going to say, yeah, I want my opportunity. He got stuffed, which any of our backs would have got stuffed. But in general, you, I, I don't know. And then Golden Tate comes in. He's a new addition. Everyone's hyped about that. I knew he wasn't going to have a good game tonight because he wasn't even going to play that much, which he didn't even play that much. He did have two catches. One, His first catch was one reception for 13 yards. Really good uh, catch. But not, I mean, really good yards after the catch right there. They put him in punt return a little bit. But you see him on the, on the sidelines. He was happy to come here, but I'm looking at him. He looks just frustrated. Not frustrated, but he's like, what am I doing? Like, I'm on the sidelines most of this game. I think it's because he doesn't know much. He doesn't know much of what we're doing when we're at the line of scrimmage, the plays we're calling, or the certain things we're doing. I don't think he knows any of that yet because he's just only been here about a week and a half, not even a week. We'll figure that out. But next we got the New Orleans Saints. I think we get blown the fuck out. I'm sorry. I think we get – sorry about the language. I think we get blown the hell out. Honestly, we get blown out. I mean, I don't, I don't see a way of winning that game. You can't beat Dallas at home. How the hell are you going to beat the New Orleans Saints in New Orleans? <laughs> Let's just pray and hope. Go Birds. And tell me how you feel.